So there's two main types of loops we're going to look at. So there's the while loop um, and the for loop. There are other types as well, but these are the two most common ones probably. Um, let's start with the while loop. And basically the idea here is if I want to repeat things. So we're going to do a really simple example to start off with. Let's say I want to log to the council, council, council the console, a series of numbers. Console.log1, console.log2. Actually, I, I like typing, but let's copy and paste. Right, and we just change these numbers, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. Okay, I'm repeating the same command, console.log, all it's changing is the number. If I run this program, we come here, let's open up our console. I'm gonna make that a little bigger. And da da da, one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Okay, but you should be thinking to yourself, wow, if only there was a better way, right? Couldn't I just repeat this over and over again and just change the number? there is a way okay so let's start talk about the while loop the while loop is very much like an if statement in terms of its syntax if something is true do this except we replace the if with a, the word while and essentially it does what it says while something is true do what's inside of these brackets right what's inside of the, the block of code all right so normally what we do to control this while loop is we use a variable we usually need to initialize this variable ahead of time. I'm going to use the variable n just for a number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9. And we're going to start at n being 1. So this is where we kind of initialize the variable. Then inside of the while loop, I'm going to do a test, a Boolean expression, right? Uh, something that evaluates the true and false. So I'm going to test my variable n, and I want to keep looping as long as n is less than 10. Or less than or equal to 9. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to do less than 10. Cool, so if that's true, and it is, and is one, one is less than 10, it'll do what's inside of here. And I want to console.log n, right? n is one, it'll print out one, great. And then I need to change n from one to two. So I'm gonna go n plus plus. And then this loop, this while loop, goes back to the beginning and tests n again. And it says, oh, is two less than 10? Yes, it is. So it prints it out, adds one to n. And is now three. Is three less than ten? Yes, it is. Prints out three, adds one to n, four, etc., etc., etc. So I can now get rid of this and this while loop basically replaced that code and it will repeat this console.log for n from one to nine. And hopefully we get the same results. Refresh just to make sure. Phew, there it is. And the benefit of this is, well, a hundred. Right, and all of a sudden, woo, look at that go. I'm going all the way one to 99. All right, and you can change how much you count by. We could go plus equals 10, and let's start at zero less than 101. So that should go zero, 10, all the multiples of 10. Boom, up to 100. Okay, so again, key concepts here is we need to initialize a variable. Then inside of this, this test here, we test the variable. Then this is actually what we want to do, the code we want to repeat. And then we need to increment that variable or update that variable. Um, if you don't update, a very common mistake is to forget this part. And then you'll get an infinite loop. Because if you don't update this variable, this condition will always be true. And your loop will be stuck forever and ever and ever and ever. And you'll have to like close the browser and whatever. It kind of stalls the browser. Okay. Now, that's a while loop. Now, one thing with this too, let's go back to one to 10 here. So just n plus plus, uh, let's go up to 11. So it's gonna print out one to 10. So it loops 10 times. Um, actually, computer scientists like to start counting at zero sometimes. So I'm gonna go zero to 10. So it'll go zero to nine. Um, in this case, we're printing out this number, but we don't have to. Right, we could print out, we don't have to use the variable n, we could just say, hey, n is just being used to keep a count of how many times I need to loop. And I could print out, you know, I will not chew gum in class. And your teacher told you to write a thousand lines. So you're like, okay, I got this. And you just write a loop from zero up to a thousand, and it'll print out, I will not chew gum in class a, th a thousand times. 
Okay, that doesn't look as impressive. I was hoping it would go all the way down. <laughs> but anyway, it does do it a thousand times. Um, if we wanted to, uh, the reason it prints it out on the same line is because it's printing the identical thing over and over again. I think you can change that in the settings, but I'll show you as well. We could use, uh, I'm just going to go N plus. I will not chew gum in class like that. And now that's going to make it different each time. Right, and you can see that. Wow, look at that! I just wrote a thousand lines in milliseconds. There it goes. Okay. Anyway, that's the main idea of repetition, right? I'm using this while loop to repeat. I'm going to comment this out now, and we're going to convert. We're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it using a for loop. So for loop is very similar to a while loop, except it's uh, condensed. Um, these key components, the initializing the variable, the testing the variable, the updating the variable, those all get put onto one line. All right, so here we go. Four, open and close parentheses, open and close braces is the main structure. Inside of this for loop, we need to do two semicolons, which break it up into three sections. An initialized section, um, this is what will run before the code. That's where we want to initialize our variable. The middle section is our test. That's our n less than 1,000. Now let's just go 100 this time. And then the third section after the semicolon is where we update the variable, n++. So same idea as the while loop, initialize the variable to n. As long as n is less than this, we'll do what's inside the loop. And once the body of the loop is done, we'll increment. And then we'll test, and then we'll do the loop, and then we'll increment, and then we'll test, and then do the loop, and then increment. And the body of the loop is simply that console.log n plus I will not chew gum in class. Okay, so this should accomplish the same thing except 100 this time just because I wanted to do less. Boom, there it is, 99. Okay, so very similar idea as a while loop. It's just usually more um, concise. Um, I find that for loops are a little, well, depending on what you need to do, but the for loop is pretty common um, for repeating things a set number of times, whereas a while loop is useful if you want to do something for an unknown number of times. And uh, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to comment that out for a second, and let's try something else. Um, let's do a little, little simulator thing. Let's do um, coin flip. Let num heads be zero. Let num tails be zero. Um, and let's say I want to loop a um, hundred times. We can just actually let's loop fifty times. So let's start at zero. N is less than fifty. N plus plus. That will loop fifty times. Right? Zero to forty nine is fifty times. And what do I want to do 50 times? I want to get a uh, rand toss, do math.random. And if rand toss is less than 0 0.5, I'm going to go num heads plus plus. Else I will go num tails plus plus, right? So just a 50 50 chance. This gives me a decimal between 0 and 1. So if it's less than 0 0.5, that happens. Else this happens. And then once the loop is done, I'm just going to console.log um, num heads plus the variable num heads. And then we'll console.log num tails plus the variable num tails. All right, so this gives you an example of how a for loop is really useful to repeat something over and over again. So this is basically. You know, this is one coin flip, right? So I toss the coin, and then if it's that, I get a head, otherwise I get a tail. And I put that inside of my loop so it does it 50 times, and then I should be able to see my results. And let's see what happens. 26 heads, 24 tails, pretty close to 50-50, and it adds up to 50 times, okay? And of course, we can change that to 500 times, and I get 257, 243. Cool. All right, now, so this is an example of using a for loop to repeat a set number of times. Let's change it. And let's, let's say I wanted to loop um, until I get 100 heads. 
So what I would do then is I need to change this part here to a while loop. Oops, sorry. So while something is true, do this. Now this is cool because I don't know how many times it's going to take for me to get 100 heads. I'm going to think somewhere around 200, but not necessarily, right? Because it could be more heads than tails. So I can do a test here and I say, while num heads is less than 100, do this code. So it'll keep repeating and it'll keep checking this variable and say, hey, you're not up to 100 yet. Let's keep going. All right. So now, um, and let's actually do a little, uh, <clears throat> well, I guess we can just add them together. I wanted to see how many times. Okay, so this time around, I got 100 um, heads, and it took me 199 tosses. If I refresh, here I got 100 heads, but this time it took 213 tosses. Right? So we don't know how many times this loop is going to run. Um, it's based on this condition here. So generally, like I said, for loops are really good for repeating a set number of times. While loops are really good at repeating until a certain condition is true. They can, the while loops can also be used to repeat a set number of times, but they're a little more versatile, I find, and you can do it to te test variables until there's a certain condition that happens. Okay, that's my introduction to loops, for loop, while loop. Hopefully that made sense.